At the 2023 UN summit, African leaders made a collective decision to expose the actions of the Western world. The president of Ghana boldly referred to the UN as the most unfair organization, while the president of the Democratic Republic of Congo demanded the withdrawal of UN peacekeeping forces from his country. However, it was the representative of Burkina Faso who delivered the most audacious statements during the United Nations General Assembly. Speaking on behalf of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the beloved leader of Burkina Faso, the representative shed light on the current actions of the West. They emphasize that after centuries of colonialism, Western troops continue to remain in African countries as new means of control. The representative vehemently proclaimed that the world should not be deceived into believing that these troops are solely on peace missions. Instead, their presence in Africa is driven by the intention to exploit natural resources. The revelations made during the United Nations General Assembly in New York were unprecedented and have sent shockwaves through the Western world. The expose has exposed the true intentions and actions of the West. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, who assumed the role of transition president in Burkina Faso since 2022 following a coup, strategically appeared at the UN General Assembly in his military uniform. This choice was intended to both draw attention and possibly provoke jealousy and offense among other world leaders due to the impactful words he would deliver. Hence, the Minister of State from Burkina Faso, speaking on behalf of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, delivered a powerful address at the General Assembly. Despite Captain Ibrahim Traoré's absence at the summit, his words resonated through the representative, causing discomfort among Western leaders. Every word spoken by the representative was carefully crafted by Ibrahim Traoré, adding to the impactful nature of the message. The Minister of State began his address by paying tribute to some of the world's greatest leaders, including Che Guevara from Argentina, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X from the USA, Nelson Mandela from South Africa, Jomo Kenyatta from Kenya, Amilcar Cabral from Guinea-Bissau, and Captain Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara from Burkina Faso. He pointed out that these remarkable leaders were tragically assassinated because they dared to speak up for their oppressed populations. Their unwavering commitment to representing the aspirations of their suffering communities led to their execution, assassination, imprisonment, or poisoning. Their only crime was advocating for justice in the face of violence, rape, oppression, and exploitation. The Minister of State emphasized that he would not employ flowery language, but rather adopt a straightforward approach to convey the truth. He boldly stated that the world is currently grappling with the deception of statecraft, diplomatic hypocrisy, the insatiable thirst for power, and the malevolent spirit of one human dominating and exploiting another. The Minister of State from Burkina Faso astutely directed his remarks towards a specific target, leaving no doubt in the minds of those present. While Western leaders anticipated the minister to discuss the vision of a better world, he instead shed light on the harsh realities that prevail. He candidly stated that every year, speeches filled with promises and commitments are heard. Yet the divide between words and actions concerning the principles outlined in the UN Charter justice, equality, dignity, integrity, self-determination, state sovereignty, territorial inviolability, and adherence to international law continues to widen. The minister emphasized that this disparity becomes painfully apparent in the tragic events unfolding in Libya, the Sahel region, and the Russia-Ukraine crisis. He drew attention to Libya, which has been devastated by catastrophic flooding, resulting in the loss of thousands of lives. While nations rushed to offer condolences and projected an image of unity in defending these values, the minister asserted that intellectual honesty and moral conscience demand, acknowledging the collective or individual complicity, whether through past actions or active collusion, in supporting those responsible for Libya's man-made disaster, looting, and the assassination of its leader, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, on October 20, 2011.
The undeniable truth is that if Libya had been allowed to thrive, and if the US had not decided to invade and kill its leader, the story would have unfolded differently today. The minister fearlessly confronted the so-called international community, led by France, who sought to dictate the appointment of a prime minister in Burkina Faso. However, their efforts proved futile. It is worth noting that these words were spoken directly in the presence of France, without hesitation or second thoughts. The state minister of Burkina Faso further revealed that France had attempted to impose its choices for critical government positions, but faced resolute resistance. The minister exposed the West's use of blackmail as a tool to coerce other nations into surrendering and adopting their prescribed policies. The minister lamented how the West has resorted to cutting off aid and creating obstacles for Burkina Faso's defense and security forces. Particularly troubling is the blockade on vital air defense equipment, largely orchestrated by France. The minister highlighted the cynical obstruction faced by Burkina Faso in securing essential air defense equipment. A significant contract with Brazil for air defense equipment was blocked, and weapons licenses from Belgium, navigation and firing systems, video cameras from the United States, and engines from Canada all faced deliberate obstruction. While the United Nations rhetoric emphasizes the defense of human rights, a profound deficit of honesty is evident within the international community. Consequently, the minister demanded that Burkina Faso be provided with the necessary weapons to defend and protect its people who are facing grave danger. The minister issued a stern warning that if no action is taken, history will hold those in power accountable for their failure to assist people in peril. The minister criticized the international community for its failure to support states under terrorist attacks, citing international hypocrisy and the dominance of certain powers within the UN. The minister raised a provocative question, pondering whether the actions of the international community should be brought before the International Criminal Court. He asserted that African peoples, particularly those in the Sahel, are resolute in their pursuit of emancipation and social progress. Burkina Faso intends to collaborate with partners of its own choosing, asserting its sovereignty in trade and defense. The minister questioned why countries like Russia, Iran, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Cuba, Nicaragua, North Korea, or Burkina Faso are not allowed to freely engage in buying and selling goods without intermediaries or authorization. This restriction implies that the world is controlled by the West. The minister strongly criticized the hypocrisy and falsehoods prevalent in the fight against terrorism, especially in the Sahel region. The minister asked who is arming, training, and supporting terrorists in the absence of weapon factories and ammunition within the region. This vital question suggests that the West may be behind the conflicts, exploiting them as a pretext to interfere in African countries. The minister suggested that Western involvement in the Sahel is linked to the vast underground resources in the area, including oil, water, and other valuable minerals. Furthermore, the minister questioned why Africa, with its vast population and size, does not have a permanent seat with veto power on the UN Security Council. This grave injustice is viewed as a crime against the UN. The minister called for an end to diplomatic falsehoods and emphasized the need to focus on genuine human rights, highlighting Africa's historical contributions to the advancement of human rights. Burkina Faso made it clear that African people do not harbor anti-French sentiments. Instead, their concerns revolve around issues such as condescension, arrogance, insolence, sufficiency, paternalism, resource exploitation, and organized crime perpetrated by Western powers. The state minister of Burkina Faso took the opportunity to provide French President Emmanuel Macron with a much-needed history lesson. He reminded Macron that on June 14, 1940, General de Gaulle, who happens to be Macron's grandfather, called upon Africa to assist in rescuing France from the clutches of the Nazis. In response to this call, 17,000 millions made the ultimate sacrifice during both world wars, a debt of blood that France has yet to fully acknowledge. 
the minister revealed Africa's vast mineral wealth, proudly stating that the continent holds 30% of the world's reserves, including 40% of the world's gold, 33% of diamonds, 80% of coltan, 60% of cobalt, and 55% of uranium. However, despite these abundant resources, Africa continues to grapple with poverty because the West persistently exploits these resources to this day. The minister attributed this to wicked diplomacy, characterized by state-sponsored crimes, organized crime, constitutional falsehoods, and the manipulation of African heads of state, including within the United Nations, which perpetuates these issues. It is important for the world to recognize that African peoples inherently value democracy and uphold human dignity. Their rejection is not of democracy itself, but rather the superficial form of democracy that often manifests through electoral-based politics, resulting in a revolving door of leaders who are often imposters and corrupt individuals. Burkina Faso emphasized that African people refuse to be controlled or dominated, particularly through fabricated conflicts and terrorism witnessed in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Africans are acutely aware of the economic, social, cultural, and security challenges stemming from secretive agreements, including colonial debts and currency issues. African countries firmly reject paying debts that perpetuate suffering while striving for genuine emancipation. They also refuse to be bound by currency systems like the franc of the French African colonies, which limit their economic sovereignty. It is crucial to clarify that, according to Article 544 of the French Civil Code, France holds a patent on the CFA franc currency. However, it is essential to note that this currency belongs to the African Francophone states. It should be highlighted that France produces banknotes for West and Central African countries in exchange for keeping their gold reserves. This arrangement, where paper is exchanged for gold bricks, reveals the most exploitative form of structural exploitation. The State Minister of Burkina Faso pointed out an important fact that the world should be aware of. Western powers often invade and interfere in African countries under the guise of promoting democracy. They employ timeless excuses such as saving democracy and ending human rights violations to legitimize their wars. Furthermore, French companies have been given priority and vested interests in light of the current situation in Burkina Faso. In response, the government has taken decisive measures by adopting a new development plan known as the Action Plan for Stabilization and Development. This comprehensive plan focuses on four key priority pillars. The first pillar entails countering terrorism and restoring territorial integrity, acknowledging the urgent need to address this pressing issue. The second pillar addresses the ongoing humanitarian crisis, emphasizing the importance of providing assistance and support to affected populations. The third pillar aims to improve governance and restore the functioning of the state recognizing the significance of strong institutions. Lastly, the fourth pillar emphasizes the promotion of national reconciliation and social cohesion, recognizing the importance of unity within the country. These actions clearly demonstrate Burkina Faso's resolve to take matters into its own hands, as the government can no longer rely on international organizations or Western countries. It becomes evident that the deployment of Western troops under the banner of UN peacekeeping missions in Africa was never intended to bring stability to the continent. Rather, it appears that they were deployed with the intention of exploiting African resources. There have been reports and claims made by African countries like Mali, accusing France of supporting terrorists within their borders. These allegations suggest that these UN peacekeeping forces are deployed under the pretext of eliminating these terrorists. However, it is disheartening to note that these terrorist groups are never truly eradicated. For instance, even after more than 25 years of UN presence, terrorist groups in Congo continue to pose a threat. This further strengthens the notion that these UN forces and Western troops were never primarily deployed to combat terrorism. They came to steal and exploit the natural resources of Africa. 
Isn't it true that the West has no interest in peacekeeping in Africa? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel.